I have absolutely no nails on right now, and I'm about ready to apply the longest pre-made gel tips in the industry on these nails. Look how long they are. When you're in a pinch for time or you don't have those sculpting skills, pre-made tips are great. And then I'm going to put the French tip white, they're pretty long too, on this hand. This is more my style for everyday wear. I'm going to break it down in detail, step by step, how to apply correctly to look beautiful and last. We're also going to do some troubleshooting. I have a special guest to help us get through it. Let's get started. Thank you Exclusive Nail Couture for sponsoring this video. Use code SUSY for 10% off at eNail Couture Worldwide, link below. As you guys know, I love doing nails, acrylic sculpted forms are my favorite, but talk about making nails easy with the introduction of pre-made tips. And here to help me get the details straight, I mean, I know how to do nails, but with every new product that comes out, you want to know how to do it properly so it looks at its best. So I'm going to tap into Max from Enail Couture. Max, hello, how are you? Hey Susie, how's it going? Yay! Really good. It's been a long time since I've seen you. It's been too long. Oh too my gosh, long. I've missed you and cameraman as well. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We have so much fun together. Well, we're going to have fun today because you're going to help me walk through so we do it correctly. Because like with anything, if you do it right, it looks its best. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I've got my naked nails. I took everything off. And of course, I need to buff the nails. And um, I can pretty much guess which file you want me to use. But which file would you like me to use to buff the natural nail? Probably maybe like a, maybe like a, let's do 180. Yeah. 180, 150. Awesome. Okay, so I've got my 180. And of course, I did take my nails off and everything. So they are pretty prepared. Oh my gosh. I know that's commitment for Sue, taking them off. <laughs> it is! <laughs> I always leave a thin layer to protect that natural nail. But I do understand that you do have to take off the majority of, if not all of it, because you are putting on a tip and you don't want it to interfere with the application. You don't want it to sit too high. We want it to sit and nestle into the nail. So I'm gonna buff this guy up. And then also another thing that I think is super important that people, we forget to do is push back the cuticle. Right, yes. Yeah, much nail estate as possible. That's right. So if you push it back maybe before you file and then after you file, you're gonna get that really airbrush flawless cuticle that everybody loves. Got you, okay. So I'm just gonna cheat and push back with my natural nail. It is pretty pushed back, I have to say, when I was removing them, I pushed them back pretty good. Okay, so, and you sent me this lovely little brush and I'm taking off yes. all the dust. We don't want any dust, any crusties in our life. Nope. And so the next step would be the prep, I take it? Yes, one coat of nail prep and then one coat of primer. Okay. Okay, now what? So now comes probably a very important step and that's sizing the nail. We want to make sure the nail is the perfect size, not too big and not too small. Okay. Well, it's a thumb, so I'm going to start. I think this was a zero. Now, do you have the numbers on the end? Yes. Yep, this is a zero. So I'm going to that's push kind of this big. guy down and that's clearly way too big. You could use that one on cameraman. I'll put this on cameraman. <laughs> Or on ah, the toe. You had a good idea. I should have put these on cameraman. Wow. That would have been a video. <laughs> Could you imagine, cameraman, you trying to do your camera work and all your computer work mm -hmm. with these bad boys? <laughs> I'd actually like to see that. Okay, let's be serious now. <laughs> okay, one. I'm going to get one. That was zero, you guys, and that was way too big for me, finger. So the thing about the 5XL nails, we have them both in stiletto and in square. Something really cool about them is that they have the structure of a sculpted acrylic nail. Oh, you mean so, like the apex already built in and stuff? That's right. Yes, and I a did really, notice. A strong C curve. Yeah, it is super strong. But I mean, structurally, if you don't have that, that is exactly how we would build acrylic when we custom build a nail. We have to put that in there because these are so long. So I'm actually glad to see mm -hmm. that. If I didn't see that, I'd be like, where, where is it? <laughs> so that's great. Okay, that's still too big, right, Max? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that was, let me try two. Where's the twos? Now, I believe you have tip boxes that you can be much more organized if you want to, you know, put your tips in a tip yeah. box. Yeah, I'll send you some next time I forgot. Okay, yeah, that's great. 
Okay, so the two, this might fit, Max. Perfect. I'll turn it sideways. You can always file it to a little bit, the contact area, the cuticle okay. area, so that way it fits your nail like a glove. Okay, I'm gonna try the three. I always like to do the one step more just to, to know for sure that the next one up doesn't work if you ever have any questions. Now, when I fit it onto the nail, if I squeeze it down, I can feel it squeezing in my nail. Is that a better fit? Because this size-wise looks better than the two looks. Like, do you want it to squeeze onto the natural nail or should it fit bigger than that? That's a great question. So, when you, if it fits too tight when you hold it down, pull back the skin on your thumb and see if it covers that little edge. If not, then you're probably gonna have to go with the bigger size. Pull back this, the cuticle skin? The Yeah, the, the lateral sidewall. Okay. Yeah, that actually does fit, it, but I can feel a tiny bit of a squeeze. Is that normal? Yeah, that mean, that's because the C-curve is so dramatic. Yeah. So when you put the gel inside, it'll fill in the gap. So it'll, right. it'll feel nice. Right, so this would be a good fit? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just try that three one more time, just to be sure that's a two. Oh, that is the three that I had. So the two is, it's not squeezing at all, but I find it's really kind of big at the cuticle. Now, I will ask you a question. I do this with a lot of them. Can you shape the cuticle to fit a little bit more accurately, or is it best not to alter the cuticle shape? You most definitely can. You can even cut them down too if you want to. On the length, you mean? Yeah, for sure. Okay. All of our nails are customizable. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do this one here, this the one that's slightly squeezing it a little bit because it does fit nice and I don't have to shape it at all, actually. So let's do this one. Okay. So now what? I like Perfect. this one. Perfect. So the cool thing about our new system now is that it's pre-etched, so you don't have to do anything to the inside. So that saves you so much time and effort. Oh, so you don't have to buff it with a file. No, no more tricky steps. No more Cirque du Soleil trying to get the inside <laughs> of a nail. Okay. That's actually great too for people that are doing it for themselves because a lot of people don't have electric files to use. No, that's exactly right. I'm not using one here today because uh, trying to keep the expense as low as possible for anybody doing it at home. And that's why I thought I would just do the file. So that's a good plan. I like that. Awesome. Perfect. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put a coat of um, our new base that we designed for the system, which is a press on gel. And it comes in two colors. It comes in clear and in pink. These guys here? That's right. Okay. And my personal favorite is the pink one, of course. Okay, so I'll use the pink one. Would that be the purple lid? Yes. Yeah, and okay. the beautiful thing about this color is that it's actually a coral violet base pink. So it looks beautiful on every skin tone, whether it be yes. super fair to super deep, cool tone, warm tone. It just looks beautiful on everyone. That's actually what I wear on my real nails. Oh, okay. Yes, I saw that. It's actually really pretty. I was wondering what that was. Okay, so I'm now putting it inside the well here, inside the little apex part? No. You're going to do a nice little layer on your real nail. Oh, okay. Paint my real nail first. And with any thickness or? Yeah. Just a nice even coat. Kind and of like if you're doing a gel polish, Manny. Okay. And should I keep? Oh, I got you. Okay. Just enough to cover the nail like a layer of color. Correct? Yes. And you can get it up close to the cuticle as well, too. Really? Because okay. when we apply the nail... Yeah, we want to leave a tiny little space between the uh, one, two, three, go nail and your real nail. So that way the file can go inside and blend yeah. the line of demarcation. I like that. Such a beautiful color, isn't it? Honestly, it is. And it's starting to look like it reminds me of your nails. Did you smell it as well? Oh, I never thought of that. Oh, it smells like um, cotton candy. It does. I was going to say it smells like me. No. <laughs> yeah, well, it does. It reminds me of Max because all your stuff smells like that, doesn't it? That's right. Oh, I'm off sugar, so that smells good. Okay. <laughs> Try to control myself. Okay, so I want to nuke it. But before you do, turn the hand upside down just about five seconds. Okay, let it level a little. One, two, yeah. three. It's a good trick. Four, five. And then I nuke it for 30. Yes. Okay. I like the buttons on top there. It's nice. Looks like a gem. I think that our lamp looks like a Power Ranger helmet. You think it looks like a helmet, and Caraman just like said it Power looks Ranger like a helmet. gem. A Power Ranger helmet? Ooh. I thought well. it looked like a gem because it's faceted. It's not curved. It's yeah. Like a jewel kind yeah, of Yeah, the little cuts. I think I, I like the gem idea better. I'm not familiar with too much of the Power Rangers. My kids, I don't think, really watched it. Oh, man, you're missing out. I think so. Maybe I'll give it a run. Okay, here we, oh, that looks pretty. That looks way better. My natural nail looks nice now. Okay, so what do I do now? 
So now there's two things you can do. So there's two roads you can take. You can either apply the nail with press on gel or you can apply it with our new gel, which is DIY, which comes in a tube. Oh, here, these guys. That's right. What do you think? Um, just make it, what's the easiest? I'm, I'm sure they're both easy, but what do you recommend? Let's do DIY. This guy here, okay. So we're gonna squeeze the gel into the well of the one, two, three, go nail. Now I'm gonna avoid the cuticle area of the tip, or does it matter? You wanna fill in the gap first, which is the apex, which okay. is where the most gel oh, will be. Okay. So because because these nails have so uh, such a dramatic apex, you're gonna use a little bit more gel than you usually would on a regular one, two, three, go nail. Okay. Just to fill in that the the gap. So I'm just filling in that apex. You can use the nose of the tube to move it around. Okay. So this is almost like in place of using a brush, you're just using the nozzle of the gel tube, right? Is that correct to say? That's right. Because this system is all about being easy and being fast yeah. and being beautiful and long lasting. You can wear your nails for up to 21 days with our 123GO system. Nice. Okay. Can you see that, Max? Does that look like? Yes. I don't know if it's deep enough because I can see a string of gel across. This is where it gets a little tricky because if you put too much, it's going to spew out the side or underneath. If you don't put enough, you're going to have pockets in it. So this is a bit of a learning curve to find out how much you need. What do you think, Max? Should I put more in there? I know, I know it's hard to tell. If you need more gel, yeah. well, I'll show you how to troubleshoot it oh. as well too, so that'll be really cool. Okay, so maybe I should leave it? Yep, and let's try okay. and see how let's it Let's just go for it, let's just try it. Mm -hmm. This is how you learn, you make mistakes and then you know how far you can push the mistake before it's right. <laughs> I think a lot of people when we're learning how to do nails, we're always so hard on ourselves, especially with social media. We see these beautiful nails and we wanna recreate them so quickly. And I think uh, we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves because I think we forget to have fun when we're doing nails, which is the most important thing. You're so right. And you know what? When you see those videos, you guys don't be intimidated by that. It took them several times to get that before they got it right. Don't think it was just slap it on. <laughs> it, there's a technique to everything. Even though it's easy, there's technique to everything. Okay, so what do I do now? So now we're going to get the nail. You're going to flip it over. Okay. And we're going to apply it kind of, I would say, maybe... Uh, what do you call this area right here? What is it? Three fourths away from the cuticle. Okay. Yeah. Like a third away from the cuticle. Yes. Correct. Okay. And you're going to rock it down. You're going to, okay. and then you're going to slide it up. Okay. I'm going to put it on now, Max. Okay. Make sure you got your little flashy lamp turned on. Oh, so that right, way she's right, ready right. to flash it. This little guy is so cute. Okay. He's ready yeah. to go. So I'm going to put this on here. Mm -hmm. Press it down slowly. Slow, but uh, slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race and then slide it back, correct? That's right. But leave a little space at the cuticles to get the file in there, right? So we can blend her out. Yeah, we can blend it out. So and because the apex on these is so dramatic, you might want to hold it down with one of your fingers and then flash it for just like five seconds. Okay, because I'm afraid to let go. Okay, so I'm going to hold it down with my finger just for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Flash it. Should that be and good, then do Max? the inside as well, too. Underneath? The inside. Yeah, that's right. Go underneath? Mm-hmm. Okay, I feel like I can let go now. And there she is. She's in place. Okay, so now do I nuke it? You can. Or if you have any spillage on the inside, you can take yes. a little gel brush oh. and just wipe it out. Well, I didn't actually have a gel brush here, but I'll use this thing. I'll just have to clean it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Now this hardened a little bit because I put the light underneath it. That's okay. We want to have the uh, gel fill in the gap between the natural nail gotcha. and the uh, one, two, three, go nail. Okay. So yeah, I'm decorating this. Thank goodness. Because I did make a bit of a mess, but now I know That's okay. what I'm trying to do. <laughs> okay. We so... all start somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to nuke this guy. One minute. Okay, so, Max, I have to ask you. Yeah. Before I go ahead and do them all, is there any other little tips I should know just as I go along to do it? So if you have a really, really super flat nail and you want to use a nail with a really dramatic arch, you can actually go back in and apply uh, one more layer of press-on gel or base gel just to build out your natural nail as well. Oh, yeah, because a lot of people do have the flat, flat nails. 
lot. Mm -hmm. It's very natural, very normal. Yeah. Okay. And if you get a bubble or if you get a gap inside the, the uh, like, for example, the 5XL nails, which is the long stiletto and yes. the long square, you can get um, the clear press-on gel and just use that and brush it on the inside. Oh, okay. That's and it'll this fill one? in the gap. This That's one right. Here. And you can, so you can actually mm -hmm. flip it underneath. And if you find you didn't put enough gel on it, you can actually add some from underneath and stick it under there to fill it in. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think with all your tips, I have been armed with enough information to try this on my own without my training yeah. wheels, Max. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. Yeah, I know. And I'm going to decorate them all with some of the special things that you sent me. So there'll be hopefully a beautiful wow. reveal picture. And then, of course, my French on this hand. Now, the French oui, is... Oui. When, I'm not going to do the French with you here because I don't want to keep you. I know you're a busy guy. Um, when I do the French, the French, um, I watch your tutorial and the white is is painted on... So be careful not to file it off when you're just shaping the sides. And the whole idea is not to file these things because they're already done for you. Hand painted, actually. All of our ombre and our French nails are handmade, actually. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. So the cool, yeah. So you want to make sure the sizing is important. And if you have any filing to do at the cuticle area, just do that prior to make sure that once you apply the nail, you have very little tailoring that you have to do. Yeah, exactly. Because you want it to do most of the work for you. That's right. So if, for example, um, one of the most common questions that I get asked is uh, after you apply the nail, the p if you have a, like a shorter nail bed where the uh, white is uh, painted on the nail already, you'll have that little shadow. What you're going to do is you're going to take the pink press on gel, turn the hand upside down and then just paint right there where uh, you have that little shadow. Cure it for about 10 seconds and then you're going to put a layer of uh, top gel on top, which uh, you can use shiny or wonder gel because press-on gel and DIY gel do not dry tack free. They're sticky after they're dry. Right, okay. That's a good idea because I do notice that gap. Sometimes if the French edge is painted further away from your natural free edge, you can see that light. If you hold it up to light, you can see it going through. So filling it in with the color is a great tip. Mm -hmm. And then make sure to put top coat on top so when the nail hits the light, you won't see any shadow. Awesome, that's a great tip. Well, thank you, Max, I'm excited. You're welcome. Have fun and try to stay out of trouble. Oh, I'll try, Max. You know me. I'm nothing but trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Susie. Thanks, Bye, cameraman. Max. I'll see, see you later. soon. Okay, so I've got one down with help, my lifeline. Now I have no more lifeline. Sort of like what you guys do when you're at home, right? You get the products and you watch the video and then you're going to sit down and try it yourself. So lots of trial and error and that's how we learn. So I have got all the sizes ready to go and I'm just going to take that 180 and I'm going to gently buff all the nails. These don't need too much. And I'm going to take care of the dust. Okay, here's the prep. Then I've got the primer. Okay, and then we're going to use the press on gel. One, two, three, go. But I am going to keep that quite thin. So let me get my little thingy. We're filling in the apex here but I'm gonna use less. It's a way smaller finger. That should be enough, right? And I'm gonna use the nozzle. He did recommend you can use the nozzle to sort of push it to the side. And then I'm gonna put it on my pinky, three quarters of the way up, sort of rock it down. My problem was too, I think I pressed too hard. And then slide it back toward the cuticle. Oh, that I did way better. Okay, now this is the part that freaks me out. I almost don't want to let it go. But every time I let it, oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay. See, it's kind of moving up. See how it wants to move? I think the idea is to try to flash it as soon as you can. Well, that worked. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to give it a bit of a nuke. Okay, so you can see I got a little bit of a bubble. I might be able to fill it in like he said from the back. We'll try that a little bit later. I'm going to just put some more in the well. I'm going to try to do less. Now this is a bigger finger. Okay, and I'm going to put it three quarters of the way up. Press it down and then slide it forward. Mm. 
This one's working way better. Got the light on there. Feeling that well. I think I'm pressing down too hard. Okay, so I'm gonna put less pressure this time. Maybe that's the trick. I think I'm pressing too hard. Because he said you should just be able to let it go. That's working better. Okay, that's better. I'm pressing too hard initially and I'm getting too much gel out the other end. So, um, yeah, I'm pressing them down too hard. Oh, I don't have to do that solo. Yeah, see how much less product I have underneath? So think less product, less product and less pressure. This index finger, I have to be honest, this finger is very, very curvy. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn this light on and I'm gonna put it right there. I feel you have to hold it, do it that way. This particular finger is quite curvy, as I said, so it's having a little resistance when I press it down. That's way better. Okay, so just to examine how I've learned and what I've improved upon, too much, it's a smaller finger too, so it makes sense. Less, which is good, just right and just right. So I got better in the last two fingers. Oh yeah, I could see if I did this on clients, I could really learn and it really is just sizing up their finger and how much you're gonna put inside there, what makes the big difference. And if I turn sideways, very happy with this. See how it's coming out the side, very nice. This is far too down, down too far. Don't like that. But these two, look, even the pinky looks really good. I like that. So would you have to pick a smaller one, the one that goes down the side too much? Uh, no, I think what I did on this one, because I did size it and I shaped it and it was good, I think I pressed too hard. That wasn't my problems. Too much gel and I pressed down too hard. So this one I pressed down too far, so it's sitting further down than it has to. Okay, and I don't see any gaps in there. I don't think we have to fill anything in. I think I actually got that part. And uh, surprisingly, they're, they're nice and straight. So I'm happy with that. They're actually straight. I thought sometimes I might get it a little bit crooked. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the French ones on this hand. And I've already described it now, so now I've got a little shorter nail, so let's see how well I do with these. Okay, so I prepared this hand and I'm gonna put the French on. The reason why I love French in this format, French is, in my opinion, the hardest nail to do. Ombre is a close second, because it's hard to fade a solid white. But that's why this is great. <laughs> these are already done for you and when you just basically press them on it's all done you don't have to do it I'm just using the lamp to cure it see how the light is coming through the other side it depends on what light you're in that you'll be really exaggerated. You can see, that's what Max and I were talking about at the beginning of the video, that you can see through that. I personally hate that. Now, what can you do about it? Max has a solution, and that is to take this pink that he has, and what we wanna do, paint a little bit in here on the underside to get rid of that look. Yeah, that, that really does take care of it. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to put it back in the light and I probably hold it upside down a little bit so the light gets into the underneath side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the rest. Look at that, instant French nails. Now I will say, see that little gap underneath there? That may not bother some people, but for me, it does kind of bother me. Remember I filled the thumb in? I'm gonna fill those in before I do the final pictures. But the one more step that you have to do, and it's not a big one, you just need to get your 180. And you just remember Max was saying, don't go too close to the cuticle, sort of slide up, leave a little tiny hairline. That's because you wanna take the file 
and you just want to go in and softly file that cuticle area. We do that because when it grows out, we want it to be as smooth as possible. So that's all I have to do with each and every one. Now you don't have to do the shape or anything. It's all done for you. Then I'm going to take probably this, yeah, this buffer right here. And I'm going to just buff around the cuticle to make it even that extra smooth. I don't know if you can see that. Look how smooth that is becoming. And then if you're going to put gel polish on particularly, you want to just buff the whole thing a little bit. The idea is you don't want to change the shape whatsoever. It's already done for you. And they look gorgeous, right? But if you turn it sideways a little, looks pretty good, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. But if I micro vision into this, like, like get in close and you can see this is one little boo-boo that I made. And you can make this with forms too. You can make it with anything you're doing. I just could have maybe had a little tiny bit bigger of a one, or maybe I needed to press it down, or it's a little too far on that side and not enough on this side. You can just see that little nail peeking out there. The other ones are good, but that's one little boo-boo I made. And maybe because I had my finger over top of it, you couldn't see it. I don't know, but I'll try to get better at that. But one thing you can do is you can just take your file and just try to file that natural nail out of there. So just be careful when you're when you're shaping any part of it. Remember, just don't want to overdo that because the design is already on there. So now at this point, you could just top coat these with a nice clear top coat. And you can do that the same with these. However, I could not stand having these, you know, seeing that there. I don't really like that at all. So I would do some sort of nail art or paint a nice solid color. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to buff all these cuticles and I'm going to buff it over. I don't think I can resist doing a beautiful design, something really eye-catching on this major nail estate. Let's take a look at those reveals. Aren't they gorgeous? Well, for my first attempt for this type of nail, I'm actually really happy how it turned out. Very, very pretty. And I used all of eNail Couture's products on here, the chrome, and I love these decals. Normally, I don't like decals because they're kind of thick, but these ones you can even overlay on top of each other. They're so thin. So I really like that. Mm, love it. Well, that certainly is an easy way to do a pink and white. If you'd like to have fun to see how we used to do pink and white back in the 80s, check out this super fun video.